Hello there, all you lovely coders. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at arrays, or as they are called in Scratch, lists. If you remember back to lesson two, we looked at variables. Yes, variables are able to store a piece of information, like for example, somebody's name or the score of a game. But what if you want to store a list of the names of the top 10 highest scorers in a game? You can't use a variable for this, as it only stores one item of data at any one time. An array or list is a data structure that can store many items of data. This stored data can then be viewed and updated. When creating a list in Scratch, you must use the variables coding blocks area. As with variables, an item in a list can be a text or a number. We're going to start off with a birthday project. Start by searching on the Scratch website for Prof Cody Lesson 6.1 or alternatively click on the link shown in the description below. Select C inside. To start you off, I have already added some music to the background code tab. We're going to start by making a list for your birthday presents. Make sure that the cat sprite is selected. Now select the variables block area and click on make a list. Name the list birthday presents. Add a green flag block to the code area and from the variables block area, add delete all of birthday presents. This will make sure that when you start, the list will be empty. Now, from the sensing blocks area, choose an ask block and write, how many presents do you want for your birthday? Add a repeat block and change the number of times it repeats to the answer to the previous question. So if you say that you want five presents, it will repeat five times. Now, from the sensing blocks area, choose an ask block and write, what would you like? Then, from the variables blocks area, drag the add to birthday presents block. Again, use answer inside this block. This will add the present to your list. Now, outside of the repeat, add the sound cheer and a say block that says, thanks for the list you would like. Then add another say block and from the variables block area, choose the birthday presents block and put it inside the say block. Now press the green flag to see what happens. In this activity, we are now going to make a memory game. This time we're going to need two lists, a list of stored items that will never be deleted and a memory list of items that, as we list them, get removed from the list. Start by searching the Scratch website for Prof Cody Lesson 6.2 or alternatively, click on the link shown in the description below. Now click See Inside. Let's start by making our lists. Click on the Variables block area and select Make a List. Call the first list Memory List. Now make a second list and call it stored list. Now click on the plus sign at the bottom of the stored list. Add each item to the list. You need five items and then click on the arrow to close the list. You also need to make three variables. And so go to the variables block area and choose make a variable. Call the first variable points. This will be used to keep your score. Call the second variable countdown You'll use this as a timer so that you can make sure that the player only has five seconds to see the words that they have been given. The last variable I'd like you to make is N. This variable is often used in programs, but more of that later. Add a green flag block and set the variable N to one. Add and delete all of the memory list so that you start with an empty list. You now want to add each of the items from the storage list to the empty memory list. Add a repeat block and then using a variables block, make it repeat the length of the stored list. In this case, it has five items and so it will repeat five times. But if the list had 10 items, it would repeat, yes, 10 times. 
Go back to the variables block area and find the add to memory list. You're going to need to put inside it item of stored list with the variable n inside this. The first time it repeats n equals 1 and so it will take the first item from the stored list and add it to the memory list. Now add a change variable n by 1 so that each time it repeats n increases by 1. This means that next time it repeats it will add item 2 from the storage list to the memory list. Then item 3, 4 and finally item 5. Before we introduce the game we need to make sure that the points variable is set to 0 and the countdown variable is set to 5. Now add these save blocks and change the text inside them to the text shown. From the variables block area select show memory list. Add a repeat 5 for the countdown. Inside the repeat block include wait 1 second and from the variables block area include a change countdown by minus 1 block. Finally after the repeat add a hide memory list so that the player can no longer see the list. This time we're going to use a repeat until block as you want to continue asking the person to name an item until they have had a chance to guess all of the items or until they have got too many items wrong. You'll need an equals operator and a less than operator and these are both inside an or operator. Now add a length of memory list is equal to 0 and after this add the OR. And after the OR add the score variable so that it will stop if the score is less than 0. Grab an ask block from the sensing block area and add the question. You're now going to need an if then else block so that if they get the item correct one thing will happen and if they get the question wrong something else will happen. Let's deal with the if first. From the variable blocks area add a memory list contains block and inside it put the sensing block answer. If the answer is correct we need to delete the word from the memory list using the delete item number of the memory list. This will find the position of the item in the list and then delete it. Now add a save block that says well done you have scored a point. Then from the variables block area add a change points by one block. Let's deal with the else part of the if then else. Grab a save block that says sorry that's not correct you lose a point. Then from the variables block area add a change point by minus one block. At the end of the game the player is keen to know how many points they have scored. Add a save block after all of the other blocks that says game over. Add another save block with two join operator blocks inside it and the points variable. So it says you have scored and it then tells you how many points you have scored. Well that's all of the code so why not try and play the memory game. Now it's time for a challenge. At the moment the game is quite easy as you only have 5 items to remember. Your challenge is to make a game with 10 words to remember. You must also change the countdown so that you have 10 seconds to remember the words. And why not change the scoring so that if you get more than 7 correct you get a special message. Now freeze the screen so you can see what you have to do. A great way to use lists or arrays in Scratch is to store the names of the highest scorers in a game. In this activity I've already made the game for you, all you have to do is make the list to store the names of the players with the highest scores. Start by searching on the Scratch website for Prof Cody Lesson 6.3 or alternatively click on the link shown in the description below. So let's see inside. Why not have a go at playing the game of Pong? All you have to do is to use the left and the right arrows to play. Press the green flag to start playing. 
Notice, in this game I have used Broadcast. This is really useful if you want to send an instruction from one part of the game to another. In this case, the game doesn't start until Dot has finished his talking. After this, Start Game is broadcast and the game will start. A similar broadcast is used at the end of the game which is called Game Over. Let's start by making a high scorer list. Go to Variables and select Make a List. Call your list High Scorer List. Now, select the dot sprite. Start by adding an if then else. If the score the player gets is greater than the current high score stored by the high score variable, then this score becomes a new high score. From variables, set high score to score. Now, from the list section, grab an insert at position one of the high scorer's list and add the variable name so that the person's name is added at position 1 in the list. Now from the list section choose show list high scorers list. In the else section grab a save block that says sorry we didn't make it onto the scoreboard. Finally from the list section of the variables area select hide high scorers list and add it after the green flag sprites. Now it's time for a challenge. What I'd like you to do now is to make your own game. Once you've made your own game, add as high score a list to it so you can see who is best at playing your game. Now freeze the screen so you can see what you have to do. Did you manage to add a high scorer's list to your game? Well that's fan dabby dozy. Remember, if you did enjoy this video, then please give it a thumbs up and why not subscribe to this channel? It's a great big arrivederci from Professor Cody, until next time.